The Lord be with you. And also with you. Let us pray. Father, we come reborn in the spirit to celebrate our sonship in the Lord Jesus Christ. Touch our hearts and help them grow toward the life you have promised. Touch our lives, make them signs of your love for all people. Grant this through Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. Our reading this noon uh, comes from the 13th chapter of 1 Corinthians. If I speak in the tongues of men and of angels, but have not love, I am a noisy gong or a clanging cymbal. And if I have prophetic powers and understand all mysteries and all knowledge, and if I have all faith so as to remove mountains, but have not love, I am nothing. If I give away all I have, and if I deliver my body up to be burned, but have not love, I gain nothing. Love is patient and kind. Love does not envy or boast. It is not arrogant or rude. It does not insist on its own way. It is not irritable or resentful. It does not rejoice at wrongdoing, but rejoices with the truth. Love bears all things, believes all things, hopes all things, endures all things love never ends as for prophecies they will pass away as for tongues they will cease as for knowledge it will pass away for we know in part and we prophesy in part but when the perfect comes the partial will pass away when i was a child i spoke like a child i thought like a child i reasoned like a child when I became a man, I gave up childish ways. For now we see in a mirror dimly, but then face to face. Now I know in part, then I shall know fully, even as I have been fully known. So now faith, hope, and love abide, these three, but the greatest of these is love. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Grace to you and peace from God our Father and the Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. Uh, our reading uh, comes from uh, Richard H. Richard Niebuhr, who lived 1894 to 1963. And the title is The Purpose of the Church and Its Ministry. What then is love and what do we mean by God and by neighbor when we speak of the ultimate purpose of the church and so of theological education as the increase of love of God and neighbor among men? By love we mean at least these attitudes and actions rejoicing in the presence of the beloved gratitude reverence and loyalty toward him love is rejoicing over the existence of the beloved one it is the desire that he be rather that he be rather than not be it is longing for his presence when he is absent it is happiness in the thought of him, it is profound satisfaction over everything that makes him great and glorious. Love is gratitude. It is thankfulness for the existence of the beloved. It is the happy acceptance of everything that he gives without the jealous feeling that the self ought to be able to do as much. It is gratitude that does not seek equality. It is wonder over the other's gift of himself in companionship. Love is reverence. It keeps its distance even as it draws near. It does not seek to absorb the other in the self 
or want to be absorbed by it. It rejoices in the otherness of the other. It desires the beloved to be what he is and does not seek to refashion him into a replica of the self or make him a means of the self's advancement. As reverent as reverence love is and seeks knowledge of the other, not by way of curiosity, nor for the sake of gaining power, but in rejoicing and in wonder. In all such love, there is an element of that, quote, holy fear, which is not a form of flight, but rather a deep respect for the otherness of the beloved and the profound unwillingness to violate his integrity. Love is loyalty. It is the willingness to let the self be destroyed rather than the other cease to be. It is the commitment of the self by self binding to make the other great. It is loyalty too to the other's cause, to his loyalty. As there is no patriotism where only country is loved and not the country's cause, that for the sake of which the nation exists. So there is no love of God where God's cause is not loved. That which God loves and to which he has bound himself in sovereign freedom. Here ends the reading. And uh, it is a very, H. Richard Niebuhr was an academic, so there is an academic and artful uh, turn of phrase to his language. But there is really the sense of being wary that we're not trying to create God in our own image, but come before him in fear and love. And also, as we interact with our neighbor, and I think I'm looking at everybody here who understands neighbor in the way Jesus uh, meant it, um, that when we are interacting with others, that we also are trying to convey that love and mercy of God, and maybe not our fully colored version of it, and that we seek to meet our neighbor where she or he is in that conversation and recognize as another is also a loved child of God, that there may be something new and a blessing for us to learn not just that we're imparting information to somebody else. And I think much of this echoes Paul's writing in 1 Corinthians. And so may we be blessed this week and always in our relationship with our loving God and with our neighbors. And may the peace of God, which surpasses all understanding, keep your hearts and minds through Christ Jesus our Lord. Amen. Amen.